as we all know, there are two types of, of carbapenem resistance, uh, Klebsiella pneumoniae, which I'll call KP, uh, that we worry about. One is uh, the ST258 strain, which is endemic in the United States and Europe. And then there are the hypervirulent Southeast Asia strains where the virulence is linked uh, to a plasmid. And very rarely have these two types of KP uh, converged into one strain. But um, these concerns led these investigators to ask whether there could be a convergence of carbapenem resistance with virulence factors that's more widespread than had been appreciated to date. So they did a series of very interesting uh, experiments. First, they looked at a collection of strains that they had previously examined. Then they went uh, to the NCBI and looked at a lot of genomes, including strains that had clinical information. And then they returned uh, to the Brigham and Women's Hospital and looked at some clinical uh, infections uh, in urinary tract infections within the hospital. So uh, on the slide in the bottom left, at the top, you can see they appreciated from their collection of strains that some of the strains had very uh, mucoid, were very mucoid, indicative of a uh, hypercapsular form, and some did not have that. And in fact, when they looked more carefully at LB auger, they realized they could distinguish these two forms of uh, KP258 strains uh, in, their select, in, in their collection. They then went on and identified genes in the bacteria that, tra that traced or tracked uh, to this uh, capsular deficient and hypercapsular form. Uh, next, they tried to see how those strains behaved in a series of experiments, which is at the top right of the slide. And in all these graphs, uh, the very first bar is the wild type strain, the second bar is the capsule deficient strain, and the third bar is the hypercapsular KPST258 strain. And so first they did some in vitro experiments, and the first one was looking at urionic acids, which are a component of capsules. And so they were verifying that they had the phenotypes right. And you can see uh, in the second bar that if it was a capsule deficient strain, it had less urionic acid. And if it was a hypercapsular strain, it had more urionic acid. So they had the strains correct. If you look at B and C, uh, they now looked at biofilm formation and the uh, capacity of the strains to invade bladder cells uh, in vitro. And here they identified that the strains that were capsule deficient actually were better at biofilm formation and they were better at uh, invading the bladder cells compared to the third bar, the hypercapsular strains. Um, then they looked at phagocytosis uh, by cells in vitro and as expected, the hypercapsular strain, the last bar was resistant to uh, this host defense. And lastly, in the far right, they put the strains into a mouse model of uh, KP infection. And that blue bar that goes down is showing that the mice died when they got the hypercapsular form. But in the top uh, lines in, in light blue and black, the mice survived with the capsule deficient and wild type strain. So they were able to identify differences in virulence amongst these capsule deficient and hypercapsular forms. Uh, they then went to the NCBI and looked at 966 genomes and identified that 10% of the strains had these SNPs in the capsular genes that they had, had identified correlated with the capsule deficient or accounted for the capsule deficient in hypercapsular strains. And then they looked at the clinical information and identified that the strains that cause bloodstream infections, in fact, were more likely to have the hypercapsular forms and those that cause urinary tract infections were more likely to have the capsule deficient forms of the KPST258 
They went then to look at urinary tract infections at Brigham and Women's Hospital and identified that actually 20% of the cultures from 30 uh, infections revealed either these hyper or hyper hypomucoid KP strains, and that the chance that this would happen was higher if they were multi-drug resistant. So the implications here are that within the KPST 258 are strains of differing adaptation and virulence uh, potential. And notably, previously capsule deficient uh, KB strains had been considered avirulent and these data suggested that the multi-drug resistance may somehow enhance a virulent shift. So on the bottom right, it's just a model saying what I've described, uh, that if a strain is, uh, is, uh, has a hypercapsular form, it's more likely to disseminate and cause uh, infections at uh, distal places. And if it's capsule deficient, it may be a strain that is able to persist in the urinary tract. So really direct clinical correlations between uh, the way the bug looks on a plate to the gene level and then to human disease. Really a very uh, revealing study. Uh, thank you very much for listening. <music>